thing that I like the most about a trailer, it centralizes all the equipment that a, uh, an association will need to safely conduct a prescribed burn. Uh, typically, we have a, uh, a bonding contract or, or a, 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 a honest handshake, I guess, if you want to call it that, with the uh, district conservation here in Perry, Oklahoma, in Noble County. And what we're allowed to do, we're allowed to keep our equipment here stored at their barn under lock and key. And then when we have a prescribed fire become available, then I call the uh, NRCS and they come down and unlock the gate and then we can pull our equipment out. Everything that we have stored down here, we store the trailer here, we store a gator with a sprayer on the back of it that's a slide in, and then we have a 200 gallon tank that'll slide in in the back of a pickup. So we keep all that stuff housed down here inside uh, the district barn area and it's all under their insurance. So whether it's here or it's out in the field, uh, all the equipment is covered. All the equipment that you see behind me, this was all under a grant program from most of the sponsors that you see uh, forecasted on the side of the trailer here. But a lot of it came from uh, Oklahoma Prescribed Burn Association. Uh, that's the umbrella that most PBAs in Oklahoma fall under. Typically what happens, I will get a landowner that will contact me either via email, text, or a personal phone call. They'll pick up the trailer inside the trailer when they open it up. And inside that door is the inventory for everything, every piece of equipment that's inside that trailer. I ask that the landowner go through that. Once they go through that and they're good and they verified everything, then they pick up the trailer, they hook it to the back of their pickup, and they take it to the site. Once on site, it's usually, they'll usually take the trailer out a day ahead of time prior to the burn. I ask that it be uh, outside of the burn unit usually somewhere where it won't be in the way, but we have, every member has easy access to it. When we show up, we usually have that whiteboard on the other side of the trailer. We have a place that we can attach that, and we put up a, a, a diagram or a schematic of what the whole burn unit looks like. And then from there, we diagram out each person's job, who's going to do what at what time. When we first picked up the trailer, the, tra the trailer itself is just an empty shell. And like I said, every PBA does their own thing. They have their own ideas because inside a PBA has different members and those different members come with a lot of different skill sets. I was lucky enough that I had a couple of carpenters in mind. So we took it out to a gentle, one of the members house and then we designed shelving units. So when we travel it over the road, we can bungee cord and strap everything in. When we open the door on site, we don't just have a bunch of equipment laying inside the floor. It's all organized. It's all labeled. It's all evenly marked. So we, even at night, if we had to go in there, we could go in there with a flashlight and, and go and, and get what we need. Typically when we show up on site, I'm usually the guy in charge. We generally show up about an hour early and I'll usually have anywhere from eight to 11 members show up. When they do that, I assign different people certain things to do. So we'll open up the trailer. I usually have a set of eight radios. Uh, the radios go inside these black harnesses here that strap around our chest. That way that radio is secured to your body, so the, in the event you get uh, in a panic or you get nervous or you get in the fire and you get a little disoriented, you don't accidentally drop that radio in the fire. Uh, I distribute the radios, we do a radio check, we make sure that everybody's is working. From there, I send somebody out on both sides, both ends of the burn unit on a county road. We'll send out the uh, road signs, make sure that those are, are placed and ready to go. When we come back, uh, we'll fill up drip torches. We usually ask, or I usually ask, that uh, the landowner fill up a five gallon jerry can full of 50-50 mix with gasoline and diesel. That's what we use to ignite the fire. From there, we put that inside the drip torches. We usually have anywhere from five to eight drip torches available full and ready to go. And then we have a striking lighter to, to light those drip torches. From that, I'll usually assign uh, anybody. I usually end up in the gator. The gator has a 100-gallon uh, sprayer on the back of it. Uh, it's usually uh, one driver and a guy that'll man the hose. Uh, from there, I usually have a another member on the shovel, another one on a flapper, another one on a rake. These are all tools that are used to uh, either uh, put out the fire or speed up the process of the fire. Uh, in talking about the process of speeding up the fire, 
A lot of people or a lot of members like to use the blower. The blower you can use to push fire or you can use it to stop fire and put the fire out. So it's a very handy tool. The chainsaw we use a lot to get things out of fence lines. The bolt cutters, in the event that something happens and we have an escape or we have a spot fire, some of the places that we go uh, don't normally have, they usually have one way in and one way out. If we have a spot fire or something in the back corner of a property that doesn't have gate, uh, we, we at least have access for a set of bolt cutters where we can cut and get through the wire and put the fire out. First aid kit, burn kit is always important. We've never had to use it, thank goodness. Water, water is always important. We always ask that the landowner provide water and provide lunch for the day. Safety harness, uh, usually visible, high vis, so if you're in the smoke or something that other members can see you. Any type of safety glasses, uh, most of my guys usually wear sunglasses and that works just as well. Uh, we have extra things like fuses, uh, fuses for uh, a lot of the components that work on the gator and the sprayer. Sometimes those go out in cold weather or just, you know, what have you. You'll have something go wrong where you have to pop a new one in there. Uh, we have extra batteries for the castrols that we use. We have extra tape, tools, uh, mar markers, paper. We have leaflets, pamphlets and things about the association. So we, if we have a new member that we're burning on, and usually the members that we do burn are usually people that are just now coming into the association. So we try to welcome them. We keep welcome packets inside the trailer as well. Usually we pack up the trailer. I have a uh, secretary that was in the military and I usually put him in charge of uh, re-inventorying the trailer before we take it off the burn site. And that goes through everything that was on that paper that the landowner did initially before we came there. Uh, he will ensure that everything else, all the radios are turned off, everything is stored exactly where it was taken from. And then from there, we pack it up and we haul it out of there. Usually one of us will bring it back home. Uh, typically what will happen, uh, mostly in a growing season burn, because the grass is so spotty and the burns become so spotty, we will usually offer up, uh, giving the landowner three or four drip torches so they can go back at any time and go ahead and complete their burn. Once they finish that, they call me and then they'll either, either I'll go out and pick up the equipment from them or they'll bring the, the equipment back in. We do, however, I forgot to mention, we do, however, in the NRCS building, there is a checkout sheet, check-in, checkout sheet for any of this equipment that any member wants to borrow. So that way, if something happens, not that it would, but if something happens, we have a start point that we can go back to so we know where that equipment was at. Uh, if, it, if an association was getting ready to form or thinking about forming, uh, probably one of the first things that they should consider would be to, to get a trailer. And uh, in that trailer, it doesn't need to be anything fancy. There's nothing here, anything fancy on this one other than a bunch of stickers on the side of it. But if I were to do that or make a recommendation, I would say the trailer is probably the most important component in the fact that it houses every piece of equipment that that association has. It makes it mobile where you don't have seven different pieces of equipment in seven different pieces of a farmer's different pickups and guys showing up because the likelihood of maybe a member got sick that day, he can't show up, then you have to go find that a piece of equipment and that just puts things behind timeline. So if you have a trailer, you have everything in it, it's lockable, it's secure, you can check it in and out, you have one location that everybody knows where it's at, I, I think it makes it much simpler.